Dr. Zoe, a licensed psychotherapist and relationship coach. A devastated woman wrote me and said that she and her husband were in the process of divorce. She found out that he had a porn addiction and he had given her an STD from his sexual adventures. She said that the biggest hurt wasn't the adultery, but it was the years of self-hate, anger, and manipulation that he projected onto her. She's been told that she has PTSD and she said she knows that something is wrong. Her question is, how do I heal? How does she get out of this painful rut and learn to love herself again and grow in her faith, which has been kind of demolished? She said her children don't like who she's become and neither does she, but she doesn't know how to find herself again. If you recognize any of yourself in this story, it's okay if this devastating experience has made you gun shy with humankind. You trusted your heart to your partner and he hurt you. That pendulum has to swing really far back sometimes before it comes back to a place of health. There's no perfect timeline for healing. People often don't respect emotional wounds like they do physical wounds. If you went into the hospital for massive heart surgery, you wouldn't expect yourself to be able to get out of the hospital and go run a half a marathon a couple weeks later. Emotional wounds are no different just because you can't see them. You're on an invisible healing journey too. Betrayal often feels like the whole world has tipped on its axis. You start to question everything from the people you love, your faith, the world, God. All those thoughts and feelings are normal. It's going to come back together, but you might have to do a little bit of searching and rearranging in order for that to happen. And that's not a bad thing. This is actually where the growth happens. If you do your work well, what you'll find is you'll come out of this with a more solid understanding of the world, your faith, God, people, and it's based on wisdom and self-education, not just what someone told you to believe. So what do you do on a healing journey? You've got to respect your injury and apply a combination of nurturing care and pushing yourself, your emotional self. You need to evaluate the story that you're telling yourself about your value, about who you are and what your place is in this world. After living with manipulation and anger and probably some emotional abuse, you've likely internalized his words and there's a part of you that believes them. We act out what we believe in the world and then what happens is the world gives it back to us. It's time to erase whatever false stories you've developed about yourself over the course of this 20 year marriage. You say that you don't like who you've become, this woman who looks back at you in the mirror, the one that your children see and they don't like her either. She's not gonna always be here. This is you, the real you, bleeding. This is you hurt. And as you heal, you're gonna change. Your real self hasn't gone anywhere. You're just expressing your pain from a wound. Yes, you will need to eventually forgive him, but let's not focus on that right now. It's not the time. Forgiveness is a process. If you rush to try to forgive somebody too quickly just because you've heard that you're supposed to forgive somebody, you're not serving yourself. You haven't even figured out what's yours and what's his and what you need to forgive yet. That takes time. Your job right now is to focus on moving towards health. Forgiveness will be a byproduct of your health journey. Now, when you recognize that you need to heal, it's easy to become overwhelmed by all the aspects of the wound that you need to work on. Instead, pick just one. What part of the divorce and the betrayal is causing you the most pain? Be honest with yourself and name it. For some, it may be loss of self-esteem, loss of companionship. For others, it may be feeling financially cheated. And for someone else, it may be the loss of the dream of your future. And the reality that you could be betrayed on this level by someone you love might feel too painful to bear. Your job is to grieve all the losses. Take some time and write down all the things that you feel you have lost as a result of your ex-husband's choices. Even as you think of this exercise, I want you to remember that your thoughts and your feelings are not reality. They're just that, thoughts and feelings. They do matter though, and that's why I want you to write them all down. Just don't get too attached to them. Sit with it for a day, grieve it, and then rip it up and throw it away. Now I want you to write down all your wins. Yes, even in the midst of devastating blows, you can find some wins. Now, this is just an exercise. It's not gonna fix everything, but it's one more tool as you walk on this journey. 
It's important also that you intentionally focus your anger on your husband right now. It's easy to generalize it to all men or even all people. It's even easy to project it onto family members or children that you can blame for your hurt. As you feel your anger, remind yourself that you don't intend to carry it for too long. Your anger is a necessary but temporary guest. I encourage you to start writing every day. It doesn't matter what you write, just write something. Commit to reading every day about your experience from a professional viewpoint, like self-help books. And it's time to become your best friend by spending alone time quiet with yourself every day, at least 10 minutes. No matter how painful it is, whatever comes up needs to come up. It's really easy to distract ourselves from the pain when we're going through a grief journey. The healthy thing though, is to sit with it regularly so that you can work on it instead of burying it. One day, you're gonna get tired of all the reading and the talking and the writing and the therapy, and it won't be constantly on the forefront of your mind. You'll realize out of the blue that you haven't thought about it all day. And that's when you can begin to see the light at the end of the tunnel. It's not an easy journey, and sometimes it feels like it's a long, windy road. Don't worry about the process. Just take it one day at a time. Okay.